What's going on, people? Mike C-Town here. And um, you guys all knew this was coming. You knew this was coming. I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the newest Star Wars film, Episode 9, entitled The Rise of Skywalker. So I wasn't even sure if I was going to make this video or not. I love Star Wars, and I love talking about Star Wars. But since these new movies have come out, uh, talking about Star Wars just isn't as fun as it used to be. The fans are just too shitty. Uh, I have a lot of good friends who all love Star Wars, and we disagree massively on certain things, but we're all still friends. But other people, oh, you're not a real Star Wars fan. You don't know anything about Star Wars, which some jackass just recently told me yesterday from the basement of his grandmother's house, pizza grease all over his fingers, but it's all fine. Anyway, I did a review with the guys on the uh, Frames Per Second podcast, but I decided to make my own video because I didn't really get all of my points across there, and a lot of people were asking me about them, plus I already had videos on the other two movies in this trilogy, so I may as well make a video on the final one. Now, before I go any further, I'll go ahead and say that I didn't really like this movie, so if you're one of those whiny titty babies that's freaking out on people for not liking something that you did, then go ahead and turn this video off now and go away because no one cares. But if you're a level-headed person who's just curious about my opinion, even if it doesn't mesh with your own, then proceed on. I'll also warn you that I don't do spoiler-free reviews, guys, so there will be hella spoilers from here out. So what was my main overall issue with this movie? That would be that it was a giant mess. Okay, J.J. Abrams seemed like his main focus was on rewriting the wrongs of The Last Jedi. And since there were a lot of wrongs, it felt like he spent more time on that than actually coming up with a satisfying conclusion to the story. Now to be fair, Ryan Johnson did leave J.J. in a tough spot if you're looking at it from J.J.'s aspect. So you could say that he did the best with what he had, but no, he really didn't. I'm going to go ahead and start with the things that I did like, though. I did like the relationship between Rey and Kylo in relation to how the Force was pulling them together. I thought the lightsaber fights were just amazing. They were well choreographed. They were well executed. The one on the wreckage of the Death Star 2 was so good. Kylo was really aggressive with it, and I loved the, the, the waves, the water crashing on the sides, man. It was really beautifully shot. And actually, most of the action stuff was a lot of fun here. I thought the stuff with the Falcon was done really well. Uh, I didn't like the goofy light speed jumping crap. But uh, just the scenes of them against the TIE Fighters was really dope and a lot of fun. The scenes on Pasana with them escaping the Stormtroopers on the bikes, that was a lot of fun too. Uh, I like that they had them all together on this quest as a team, even though it did feel like some, some Tomb Raider Legend of Zelda type shit. I thought Kylo's arc was pretty cool. I would have loved to have seen that stretched out and fleshed out a bit more, but for what we got, I thought it was good. I thought his strive to become this all-powerful supreme leader and then his realization that he was maybe on the wrong side of things was, was done well. Uh, I think it would have been done even better if Kathleen Kennedy and the higher-ups had the sense to have a central plan with Kylo for all three movies, but what are you going to do now? But Adam Driver, he killed this role. I know some people didn't like him, but I loved what they did with C-3PO in this film. Um, I, I thought that he was an important part of the story and he offered some great comic relief that didn't come off as hokey to me. I actually teared up when we got to the scene where his memory was going to be wiped. Um, I would have preferred that they left him with the memory erased, so there would have been some real sense of sacrifice there, but whatever. I thought the treatment of Leia was really cool. It was very, very, very tasteful. I thought giving her that much of a part of the whole plan was a nice thing to do. I liked the idea that she was training to be a Jedi with Luke and that apparently she was a badass. Um, the way that she died was fine. Um, I would have liked for it to have been her showing up to convince Kylo to turn away from the dark side, but I understand that that was kind of impossible since she'd already passed. So Han replacing her as this memory was fine. Um, I like how it linked back to the conversation that he had with Kylo in uh, The Force Awakens, but instead of it going bad, it went in a different direction, and Kylo sort of transformed back to Ben. Palpatine was 
awesome. He felt menacing, he felt creepy, just like he did before, but he was even cooler in this movie. He looked like this crazy zombie. The makeup was dope. But um, yeah, let's 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 get into what I didn't like. While Palpatine was cool and all, so what? It just didn't feel impactful. You know, I was excited to see him back. I said in my in my trailer video that I was sure the story was gonna be like he was in the background pulling the strings the entire time, and I was right. However, I don't feel like they utilized him very well. His big introduction into the trilogy was in the crawl. The dead speak. Palpatine's back. Like what? You know, dude sent out a, a, a mass text announcing his return, you know? I thought that was really lame. It would have been nice to see more of them actually discovering his return, not it just being blurted out the way it was. Some people disagree with me, but I feel like Palpatine's part was clearly written with Snoke in mind. I think when J.J. laid out this whole plan for Snoke, he never thought that Ryan Johnson was going to kill him in the next movie. So him being left with no major antagonist and with so many fans upset with how the last story went, J.J. Abrams was bent on fan service. And the best way to fix that, bring back the big bad, the Emperor. Now, I was stoked to have him coming back, but make it make sense, you know, and make it seem like an integral part of the story. To me, it didn't. It felt like the Emperor was just kind of shoehorned in there. I would have liked his inclusion into this film better had they given hints to his presence throughout the other two movies, but they didn't. So this really felt like a total afterthought on JJ's part and very poor treatment of such a cool character. And I don't even have time to get into how this affects the legacy of Anakin. And the way they killed him was super lame. Uh, Ray takes two lightsabers and redirects his force lightning. Uh, it may have been cool if we didn't already see something like this already happen in episode three uh, with Mace Windu. So I don't know, man. Well, how else could they have killed him, Mike? I don't know. I'm not a filmmaker, you know, and it's not my job to figure out a better way for this to happen. But it is my right to say that I feel like this way was really cheap. I think Palpatine deserved a more interesting death. Uh, that is, if he's even dead, you know? Who's to say he won't return again in 10 years when Disney runs out of ideas again? I also didn't like the treatment of the Knights of Ren. You know, they were made to seem like total badasses, but... They did absolutely nothing in this movie except show up and look cool. You know, it would have actually been kind of neat to see them tearing through some resistance fighters or maybe even go up against Rey. But no, they show up a few times, they jump Kylo Ren like he's a crip, and then they get whipped fairly easily once Kylo gets a lightsaber. It was trash. Chewie getting a medal was corny, but whatever. It didn't bother me that much. I just felt like it was pointless. Uh, so was Dio, the little robot. He was pointless. Lando was meh. He didn't really have much of a point here, but I was super happy to see him. It felt great to see him and Chewie again, but I kind of wish his role was bigger here, but whatever. Uh, Finn was meh. He was annoying as usual. Him being force sensitive was really boring to me because who cares? You know, seemed like they were just doing that because so many fans were complaining about the okie doke in The Force Awakens because they all thought Finn was going to be a Jedi. So here's JJ trying to appease people with some old, like, well, maybe he might be kind of garbage. And I think it'll probably set up a nice sequel somewhere down the line. I really didn't care about Rey's arc in this movie. Rey never felt like she was in any tangible danger. She had no real hero story. Uh, we always knew she was going to win in the end, and the movie never gave us any real indication that that might not be the case. You know, I've gone back and forth about the whole idea of her being too powerful, but after this film, yeah, I kind of feel that angle. Um, not enough to get up in arms about it, but I just wasn't interested in her here. And her being a Palpatine was dumb as hell to me. It didn't feel like this big shock. It felt like an extremely cheap version of Luke finding out that he's Vader's son. Uh, except here, I didn't give a damn. When she shot the lightning from her hand, I was like, wow, that's what we're doing here? She's a Palpatine? I, I can't really explain why I thought that angle was goofy. I guess it just felt like we've been here before and I was really hoping that JJ would do something creative and different, but no. Um, I guess this was his way of explaining off her being so incredibly and unrealistically powerful uh, even before she had any level of training but I still just don't buy into it and I thought it was whack. And now that they've explained who her parents were, it really made no sense that they just dropped her off on Jakku. Why not take her to Luke's school? 
Because if, if, if they're Palpatine's kids, then I'm sure they knew about the school. Oh, but nah, we have this potentially powerful daughter and we're trying to hide her from the Emperor, so let's just take her to this planet and leave her, unguarded. Yeah, it's dumb. And Palpatine, as powerful he is, he couldn't have just found her. And the no one thing turns out to be really goofy. Kylo said in episode 8 that her parents were no one. And then in 9, it's like, oh, psych, it was all a semantics game. Like, they chose to be no one. Very similar to how Obi-Wan played that semantics game when he was telling Luke how Vader killed Anakin. I guess it makes sense from a certain point of view. Get it? The kiss. Yeah, I groaned out loud in the theater. Uh, it was just really pointless and really made no sense. I never got any sense of romantic tension between the two of them. Oh, but since one's male and one's female, they clearly must have some sort of sexual contact. You know, it wasn't a huge deal. It was just another example of JJ trying to appease the fans. You know, I'm sure he saw the whole Raylo thing online and was like, oh, this will make him happy, but I thought it was goofy. And Ray calling herself a Skywalker at the end of the movie was corny as hell to me. Why lie? You know, she's not a Skywalker. I guess she did spend a whole lot of time with Leia, but we didn't really get the feeling of a mother-daughter relationship, at least not a strong one. Uh, maybe it was meant more metaphorical than her literally claiming to be a Skywalker, but it still came off lame to me. She could have just told that old lady that asked that her name was Rey. Just Rey. Or she could have told her to mind her goddamn business. That would have been tight. Force slapper or something. I know a lot of people were bothered, but I had no real issue with the new force powers that were introduced, the force healing thing, whatever it exists, and that's fine. But while I had no real issue with them adding force powers, the question of practicality and continuity does come into play because it does bring up the question of why haven't we seen this before? Why didn't Obi-Wan use it on Qui-Gon? You know, maybe he didn't really have time because he was too busy fighting Darth Maul. I don't know. But, you know, why didn't uh, anyone use it in the battle in Episode 2 when those Jedi were killed off by uh, the battle droids that Dooku had? You know, why didn't anyone use Force Healing then? Did Mace Windu not know how? Um, but that's nitpicking, I understand that. Uh, I don't really care about that, but I'm just bringing it up and I'm mentioning it in case anyone has answers to that question. Overall, I really did not like this movie. I thought it was extremely sloppy and it was all over the place. Not what I would want to see with the final movie of the Skywalker story. It was actually quite predictable. Nothing was shocking. Nothing that they wanted to hit really hit for me. The movie took no risks, really. Uh, a lot of it felt like Return of the Jedi Part 2 Electric Boogaloo from the parentage revelation to the ceiling opening up and then watching the, the resistance fighters and everybody getting wrecked above to the strike me down shit. And as much as I didn't like The Last Jedi, at least Ryan Johnson had the balls to do something new. I just wish he had done it better. Um, there should have been some sort of happy medium between uh, JJ and Ryan. Like maybe if they had worked together on this, it would have made a more satisfying conclusion and maybe the whole thing would have felt more like a trilogy a beginning middle and end you know and as much as a lot of us don't like them at least that's something that the prequels had you know they had a solid sense of a trilogy a, a, a central story these films did not you know if anything all they did was introduce far more questions than they did answers you know as a, as a general movie it was fine but the story itself was terrible. Far too many holes and far too many flaws for me to enjoy overall. Um, you know, it, it was a great fan film that was posted on Reddit, but not a great Disney produced official Star Wars film. But honestly, we should have expected this. I don't think I'm out of line by saying that the best parts of Star Wars are clearly in the past. You know, Mandalorian's great, but as far as movies go, I don't see anything really affecting us in a way that's long lasting. You know, Kathleen Kennedy may need to be reevaluated because why would you reignite a classic story that is so important to millions of people with a new trilogy with no solid plan on how the story's gonna go? Uh, multiple people are stepping in and out of these movies. No one has a central path for the beginning, middle, and end which results in the story being all over the place and offering little to no continuity. You know, be honest, when you watch these three movies back to back, which I did, can you honestly say that all three movies feel like the same story or do they feel like some sort of Jenga of movies? And for a franchise like this, it shouldn't feel that way. You know, I think we deserved a much better trilogy than what we got, even though certain parts were actually cool. Um, but I'm glad 
this trilogy's over. I'm not looking back on it fondly. Uh, some parts I loved, a lot of parts I hated. Uh, the only real happiness that I could pull from some of this are the events that surrounded the movies that I got to experience with some of my closest friends, but I'm not gonna miss these characters at all. You know, I don't think they were iconic characters. I think they were fairly bland meal tickets for the franchise that didn't really do anything at all for the Star Wars universe. I don't care to see any further adventures with Finn or Poe and definitely not Rey, uh, even though I guarantee we will definitely be seeing more of her in the very near future, but this whole thing as a whole just didn't work very well for me. If it does for you though, that is great, um, which leads me to my last point of this video. If you like this movie, I am happy for you. It would never be my intention to convince anyone not to like something. And people that accuse me of that when I speak less than favorably about certain things are idiots. Why would anyone intentionally not want to like something? You know, most of my friends really enjoyed this film and I've told them all that I'm happy that they liked it and I wish I did too. But I'm the kind of person that can't just roll with shit because I don't want to have to dislike something. And the idea that critics don't like it because they're critics is stupid. That's once again self-conscious people refusing to accept that opinions aren't universal concrete fact. And these people saying that people who don't like it only dislike it because they don't know anything about Star Wars, yeah, y'all are goofy as shit too. I'm sorry you're too weak-willed to accept that your opinions are being challenged by people that you don't even know. But that's a fact of life that you're just gonna have to deal with at some point, but dismissing it as critics versus the true fans is really, really immature. Because what makes me a critic versus a real fan? Because I, I'm on a platform, so my platform somehow shifts my opinions? If you really think that, let me forward you this email that I got from this Nigerian prince who wants to send me his bucket of jewels that's worth $10 million. All I gotta do is send him 5,000 in cash. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a great deal. If you dislike this movie, let other people enjoy it and be happy. Uh, if you really like this movie, understand that some people don't and there's no deep explanation for it other than everyone's brains aren't connected. Cool? Cool. That's it for this video. I know it's long, but hey, whatever. Um, drop some comments down there in the comment section. Let's try to keep this thing civil and have fun with it, aka don't be an asshole. But um, as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right? Peace out, boy.